All right, guys, as a landscape photographer here in Australia, if there's one thing I absolutely love doing is in summer, jumping in a helicopter and doing a hour or an hour and a half aerial shoot. You get so many images, you get so many different compositions as you shoot. And what I'm gonna show you is how I go about editing my aerial images. All right, so here's my aerial shoot on Australia Day. After you take off and arrive on your location, it's very close, mascot airport to the eastern beaches of Sydney. And as you go through, you're just basically sitting there, opportunistic shooting, different camera bodies, different lenses, and you're just picking off different kinds of shots, looking for different compositions. Bondi Beach, well, it's absolutely rammed, it can have on Bondi Beach in summer can have anywhere from 100 to 200,000 people. And this is why, like for me, summer aerial images are the best because you want that life. You want to look at the beach when it's just rammed and packed full of people because you can get people in the foreground in the water as they're swimming, open up, get the whole feel and the vibe of summer. And you just, it's just amazing. And the thing is, is though, is that like when you're shooting around, this is Bondi Icebergs, as you're shooting around, you got your camera lens, you click, 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 click with your eye closed, just picking off different compositions, changing lenses. You're shooting at 24 to 70 mil with one lens and you chuck that off, put the 70 to 200 on, click, click, click. And literally after an hour and a half of flying, you can't even close your eye anymore. You've got like full on eye fatigue and it's just a full on experience. It's like if I, I'd highly recommend if you can jump in a helicopter and do a shoot, the amount of images that you'll come back with is unbelievable. This is Bronte Baths. Again, this is Bondi. More Bondi icebergs. And you just look at all the shots I got. And all these files have all been edited. And easily from a flight, you can add probably like 30 or 40 amazing images to your website. And then from that, you can go through and pick all these other images out that you can put on a stock website as well. So still going all the way through. Maroubra Baths. And you're just capturing so much life, so much sort of the essence of what summer's like here in Australia. So just gonna come up and find the image that we're gonna edit. It's this one here, and this is down at Bronte Beach. So because, we, because you get so many aerial shots, you want your workflow with editing to be really quick. And because you've got really even lighting, mostly the image is mostly about adding contrast and doing some color adjustments to the image. You don't have to worry so much about highlights and shadows with doing a sunrise or sunset or a waterfall scene. Well, there's no exposure bracketing. There's nothing like that. There's no focus stacking. It's literally just editing the file as it is. So I just come through and I always do my basic edits, do the optics, remove chromic aberration, profile lens corrections. Come into the basic, I always open up my shadows, close down my highlights. And because I've done that on both, I then come into my exposure and then just see and add as much exposure into the image as I can. Just want to watch your, any sort of highlights you got with like whitewashed water. Add a little bit of contrast, we'll probably bring it back a bit too far there. Bit of contrast. I don't really do dehaze because it's just, I don't think it's really necessary. I don't add clarity or texture in any these sort of shots. So once you've gone through that, just click open. Okay, so our file's opened up in Photoshop. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a bit of protection over here on the highlights. We're gonna come in and select say, so we've got a lights three, lights four. We're gonna go for a lights three, add it to a curve layer. I'm just gonna, just see if we just bring back some of those highlights, just a bit of protection on them. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add contrast to the image. So usually you can come in, filter, nick collection if you've got it, color effects pro four, 
We won't use this, but I'm just going to show you how Nick Effects will apply contrast to the image, and I'll show you basically how you can do the exact same thing without a plugin. So if you're coming with correct contrast, as we bring it up, you can see how it's adding contrast, but it's also hitting the shadow areas as well. And then if you grab dynamic contrast, you can see how it's adding more contrast to sort of like the highlighted areas. So if we cancel out of that, come into our adjustment layers, grab two hue saturation layers, set the top one to color dodge, set the bottom one to color burn, So they look terrible, but don't worry. We're going to come in and drop the fill to zero on both layers. Now you build them up. So grab your fill and just start adding it ever so slightly, especially with the color burn. You don't need much at all. So you can see how we're getting that effect already with the contrast adjustment that we had with the Nick FX filter. Now we're going to come into color dodge and build it up. This will pop your highlights though. So don't worry about your highlights too much. Just look at what it's gonna do globally to your image. So that looks really good. So if I hold down the option key, click on my eyeball, there's before, after. So we're gonna grab a lights mask and just give some protection over in these highlights. So let's have a look at lights three. Looks nice and broad. Look at lights two. Lights three will do. Just come hit apply. So I turn the mask on and off. That's the sort of protection that it's given. So I'm just gonna, with my paintbrush, add a lower opacity, black. I'm just gonna come in and just give it a little bit extra into these highlights and down here. So if I turn the mask on and off, turn the eyeball on and off. You can sort of see that we've just, it's just added that perfect amount of brightness to it because it did have a little bit of a funny bit of color around it. You could come in and just paint a little bit more around it a bit, just to blend it out a bit better. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and do some color now. Gonna come in, add a vibrancy mask. onto a hue saturation layer, build it up. Now I'm gonna come in and I can do a curve adjustment. Lift my curve up. Just, I'm really looking at, this is for the water. I just really wanted to have that, almost that crystal sort of blue look to it. Or after command I to invert it to hide it because we're going to paint this in now. Open up your brackets on your brush tool, X on your keyboard to paint white. Let's make it four, hit four to make it 40%. And now you're just going to paint it in where you want it, where you want it to be applied. And as you come into some of the top areas, you can hit two on your keyboard and only paint it in at 20%. Hold down your shift key, click on your mask just to see how it's being applied to other areas because you might want to paint it in there. So I think we can paint a little bit in up the top here. Let's see what it looks like at all pass at 20%. So that looks quite nice. Just bring it around. Probably don't need to add too much more contrast up to the top there. Maybe a bit more down here in the water. Come around. Next thing I'm gonna do, Come in, selective color layer, come into my whites, grab the black, drag it left and right, see where it's gonna be affected, bring it back to the center and then just drag it the direction that you think you want it to be applied in. So we're going right, before, after, it's just very subtle now. Gonna come into my yellows. These yellows up on the rocks here, probably a little bit too much. So I'm gonna grab my black and I'll pull them back a little bit. I'm going to play with my cyan and just, just pull some of that really, that sort of bright yellow out of them. 
Going to flatten the image. Going to hit Command J. Going to come up to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and do a local area contrast adjustment to the image now. Just pick an area that's got some good texture in it, the water has. Just look around in your image to see how it's going to go. So I've got this amount at 34% at a radius of 2.6. It's just going to be very subjective to the file that you got and how much you want to apply. Again, we don't want to give it the effect of sharpening in the image. It's a contrast adjustment because sharpening is a print process, not a post-production process. So you don't want to basically sharpen your image. Merge that down. So come in, have a nice close look. Everything looks really nice and clear. Our water looks good, everything looks great. And that's pretty much it guys. So if you got a lot out of this tutorial, it'd be great if you could give us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.